In 1999, the first Polaris Ranger 6x6 was introduced and brought to the market. As you can see with six wheels, it was made to work. With pretty decent torque, lower horsepower, and a little bit of a top speed past 25 miles per hour, it was made as a straight working vehicle. Jump forward to 2009, 10 years later, and as you can see, the Polaris Ranger started taking shape. Adding more horsepower, adding more comfort, it was more of an all-around machine. Now we jump even 10 more years past that to 2019, and not only did the film quality improve, so did the Polaris Ranger. And then jump two more years to 2022, and you have the Polaris Ranger North Star Trail Boss Edition. What's up guys, Garrett here with Deranged Off Road, and of course we have Dustin, our old deranged bro. Oh man, bringing me back. Be, he used to be part of it, but... Until you kicked me out. Yeah, until we kicked him out. We basically kicked him out. He didn't know anything, so we kicked him out. <laughs> so, uh, guess what we have here? He's got a brand new Ranger XP1000 um, Trail Boss Edition. But before we jump into that, let's talk about uh, his experience and history, or past history I should say, about... The Ranger 900. So back in 2015 and 14, we were heading to the guys trip at Duck Creek, and we've talked about this before. And we were taking his dad's Arctic Cat four seater. Yeah, the Wildcat. The Wildcat. So um, <clears throat> eventually, he ended up. I think he was basically the first one to get a UTV out of our group. I think. I think so. Yeah, yeah. it was. So was he had the Ranger. Um, a Ranger 900. Oh, that's my GoPro going off. He had the Ranger 900. Um, it was black and blue, and I will run some B-roll on this of different things that we were doing to it. Let's see, we did a light bar, light lift, bar, oil change, how to tires, tires. So if you guys haven't checked right. out those videos, go back, check them out. We have them on there. Um, it turned out great. So what do you think about your XP 900, or as far as the general goes, over the course of owning it for? How many years? Six years. Six years. So what do you think? So I had it for six years and never a single issue whatsoever. Uh, it was fantastic. Matter of fact, you guys peer pressured me into getting this one. My wife didn't want it. I knew this was going to come up. My I wife totally didn't want to sell it. <laughs> she didn't want to sell the other one. So I was completely peer pressured by you and the group into getting this one. And uh, but the other, the 16, yeah, we literally, we had no problems with it whatsoever. It was awesome. There I was times in stock form, there was six grown yeah. males, <laughs> all six of our of size, us. stuck in that thing running Duck Creek Mountains <laughs> ranges everywhere. For the whole, like, for the whole day yeah. times three days in a row. With snacks in the back, some oh, flower yeah. seeds spitting at each other. Like, honestly, like, that thing went everywhere, and it was completely stocked. Yeah, we didn't, at the time, we didn't even have it really lifted or anything yeah. like that. So yeah. we were definitely, you know, hitting the, uh, re the uh, you know, guard underneath. Over, yeah. The, we, smacking we, into it. We exceeded the weight limit, that's for sure. <laughs> I think we sunk, we even raised the shocks, if you remember. <laughs> we, ra we raised them up because we were sinking down pretty far <laughs> with, uh, with all of us. But no, it was a blast. And I had it for six years. I mean, like I said, didn't, never even had to change the belt on it. Yeah. I mean, just change the fluids and kept up on that maintenance but as far as like the belt goes never had to change anything so one thing i want to point out from our guys trip plus all the times he had it at the cabin and everywhere else sand hollow wherever um adding the bracket lift and the new tires made a massive difference yeah. for you running around everywhere you know? even with my family yeah with the family difference. and all the all the gear in it but the other big thing that i noticed that came out of that ranger was li uh, reliability it was always reliable like you didn't have any issues yeah dude. never like, never had an issue yeah wasn't like dave's can-am that always was breaking down the uh defender what was it the defender is that what yeah, it was yeah the defender yeah that was I always didn't say it dave that was know. always breaking down non-stop literally never had an issue with it so that's why naturally i wanted to go again with the polaris because yeah. it was so bulletproof in my opinion and we i mean i wouldn't say dustin beats on his machines but He's not afraid just to go ride them. So like we were out like riding the thing all the time. Like it was getting well used. Yeah, so if you guys haven't checked out those videos, check them out where we've done some upgrades to it. 
But tonight we really want to jump in and talk uh, talk about his new Trail Boss. Um, this is quite the upgrade <laughs> from his 900. This is like talked a car. into by by Garrett, Dave, and Joe at uh, Deranged. Like literally talked into by you guys. I, I, so. We said like three words and you jumped right on. Yeah, yeah. Well. But yeah, as you can see, it's a sweet machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to take you guys around. Um, Dustin's going to talk a little bit about it, kind of what the difference is on this versus a standard um, 1000 General. There is quite a bit of differences except, I mean, of course you have the fully enclosed cab, but there's a lot more to it than just that that you get in this model, um, especially when you get the Trail Boss model. But yeah, this is a massive upgrade from his 900, but like he said, he really wanted to go with it because um, the other one was so reliable, so well, you can't beat that. And where we ride to, it can be a lot of dust. Yeah. So like for me thinking, hey, I've got my windows I can keep rolled up, my windshield closed, AC on or heat. It just made sense to be able to do that. Well, well and deranged off-road, like we want to get into something like this as well, and we might do the Can-Am Defender one. Um, so that way we kind of have a head ahead with these machines down the road. But really, we're, we're in the same boat. Like when we go out to Deer Creek, Deer Creek, Duck Creek, Dust Creek, we call Dust it. Creek, Dust Creek, and then go out. Like if you wanted to go to the Grand Canyon from here, um, we can drive right right from St. George. Yeah. All those areas you can jump in um, on a Saturday night, Sunday morning, whatever during the week, and just ride and not get all dirty and everything, which makes it nice and enjoyable. Mainly because you have heat and AC in this unit. So yeah. let's get walking around, and uh, we'll go from there. And uh, if you guys have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments below and then we can help answer those all right dustin let's start with the walk around tell us exactly the full name of this edition of uh <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of a mouthful so it's the polaris ranger 1000 north star edition trail or north star trail boss edition there so you there's a lot it's, it's yeah there's a lot in it so so first of all as you can see you've got the main front windshield that fully extends and opens and we'll show that in a bit as we get inside but up here, tell us a little bit about the, so does this bumper come stock on this on this edition or does it come on a lot of the different editions? So on the North Star edition, which this is, it comes stock. So the okay. bumper comes stock, um, the front cam there's a front camera and a rear camera that comes stock as well. Uh, of course the winch that comes stock with the North Star edition. Um, and so this bumper is, it's beefy. It's, lot, it's a lot more beefy than the 16 I had. I mean, it is, it's a big, big heavy duty bumper. So, but um, as far as that goes, on the front, like you said, there's the windshield, we'll show that. Um, has like windshield wipers. It even shoots the fluid out to the windshield cleaner fluid if you want to. So if you're riding, get mud on it, you could shoot it up there. Um, so that kind of all comes standard with the North Star Edition. Okay, and then also tell us about the A-arms underneath, because those are all um, high clearance A-arms, right? Yeah, so that's where the Trail Boss Edition comes in. So the Trail Boss has the high arch A-arms in the front and the back as well. And the other thing it adds too is it adds a self-leveling suspension in the back. So if you're loading up with like heavy gear, things like that in the bed, the suspension actually will self-level to whatever weight that you're putting. I'm mentioning that it has self-leveling suspension, honestly, it's magic. I don't know how it works, but I just know that you put in a load here in the bed and it will self-level, especially, you know, when you're going down trails, it's nice to have that so you're not, you know, off kilted or whatever, you know, when you're driving. And so, and it has the high arch A-arms back here as well, which is huge when you're, again, you're going over, you know, up in Duck Creek, there's a lot of lava. So you might encounter that. So having the high arch A-arms allows you to just easily go over that without having to worry about scraping up so and then also mention i we haven't even talked about it in general what is the color called on this on this model um is it like I ghost, think it's gray? Called ghost gray yeah okay. so it's called ghost so the so the trail boss edition like comes with its own color and no other you can you know in the ranger you can't get this color other than the trail boss edition okay so. and then also just to make it clear all the windows have been tinted by Dustin after he bought it. Yeah, so I've got come that way. tinted here locally. Just picked it up a couple days ago, actually. All right, so why don't you jump in the driver's seat? I'll come through the passenger side and we'll start talking about the inside. All right, so now we're in the inside, so we're going to walk through a few things. Um, Dustin, go ahead and show them the flip uh, up windshield. Oh, yeah, so it's just as easy as taking this handle, flipping it up. 
and then pushing it out. So it either goes out all the way or you can bring it in and then it's just a little bit, maybe like two or three inches off to get a little bit of airflow. Or okay. you can ride a bit like that. Uh, also, he was one of the few that got lucky to get ride command still. He li <laughs> literally timed this uh, purchase perfect. So luckily, Deranged pushed him to get it. Yeah, I think so. So he got this all at the perfect time. So in the Trail Boss Edition at the time, there was no option not to get ride command. You had to get it. So yeah, I think, I mean, it worked out. Honestly, and this thing is so crazy. Like I've gone through some of it, but it is, there's a ton of different features to it. A ton of different menus, sub menus. It has an incredible amount of information, so. So as you guys know with Ride Command, it's pretty much the same on all the units that Polaris installs it in. All this is relatively the same. Um, show us where all your buttons are for the AC heat and how all that works real quick. Sure, so there's just the knob. You can turn it right here, turn it on. There's this little button right here that allows you to turn on the AC. Uh, without it, you can, it's actually AC in like a defrost mode too. And then this just controls your heat. Um, this they have like the performance mode, standard, and the work mode, so you could easily select between the three. Just changes up like your engine RPMs, you know, allows a little bit more power to come like on the performance mode. And then there's also with the uh, Trail Boss Edition, you get the hill descent, which is nice because if you're going down a big hill, you can flip this on, and it basically will maintain your speed for you. So. It won't get away from you. All right, so now we're going to talk um, about the street legal kit we actually put on the Ranger as well just recently. Okay. Yeah, so I went with the WD Electronics, which I wanted because personally drilling holes in a brand new machine I didn't want to have to do. Um, but Garrett was so gracious enough to install it for me. and That's that, me, by the way. Yeah, that's him. Because Joe and Dave ain't going to do it. <laughs> and I have no idea what I'm doing whatsoever, but... It is a plug and play, so I think it probably was fairly yeah, easy. Yeah, it was easy. Um, so I appreciate that, but the thing with the, and I can come out and show you with the WD Electronics, is that you actually get here in the front these LED strips, which act like daytime running lights. I think they're awesome looking. And when you turn on the blinkers, they're sequential, so like left and right. I think it just looks really good. So the big thing is too, and I got to chime in because we run the Ryko kit on the Pro XP. Um, so as far as the kit goes in the rear, they're basically kind of the same. Um, they plug into the existing tail lights, so they have brake function, turn signal function, all that kind of stuff. On the Pro, we decided to put whole new headlights in to get the same type of effect where these come with the strips. But I want Dustin to show the turn signal portion of it, like the actual lever because I really prefer this setup more um, because I just think it's a nicer setup. So with yours, is it like a button? Yeah, it like it's got, so, so the Ryko has like this lever and then it has a button for the horn. We're actually installed a horn um, rocker switch for, for yeah, Dustin. Right here. Um, and this is just, I don't know, I just like this lever better. Yep, I think it's nice, classy. So it's pretty cool. It integrates all right here in the dash. Um, and that basically goes for all Razor stuff. If you have that, you're able to integrate it. On a scale of one to 10, on installing 10 being a difficult um, install, basically this was straight up like a um, like four. It's mainly just taking the, the dash and some parts off to run the wires. Everything else was plug and play. It was relatively easy. So. I usually measure how the install goes by how many cuss words. So is it like a, you know, like a 50 cuss word job or like a 25? That's how you measure it. For me, it was only like a five. And that's just because I was getting tired, but <laughs> it was only like five word. It would be like 500 for me, pal, if I would have done it. So. All right, so moving on to the doors. Just a couple cool features on this particular <clears throat> machine is you get power windows in the front. So for both driver and passenger in the rear, they're the old style crank windows. That's what you have. I know on the Defender uh, Limited or whatever it's called, they actually have power windows all the way around. But, you know, my kids, they can roll down the windows. That's fine. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. And the cool thing, they put little features like this. There's like a little LED accent light. They have them around in the cab itself. So, you know, just, I think, thoughtful features that they put in. And if I had a, I guess, if I had a gripe about the doors, 
The one thing that I don't like about these is that especially, so the back close like butter, like it's just, they close super easy, but the front driver closes, you gotta close it pretty hard to get it shut, to get that seal. And the passenger front, you have to just slam shut to get a seal. I have heard that there's a way to, I think, shimmy this striker right here or something to that nature. I've looked on a few forums. I haven't done it yet. I'll just have Garrett do it. So legitimately, I already know how to fix it. And I can do it like <laughs> relatively quick. But <laughs> I'm slamming the doors. Garrett will probably fix it tonight for me. But nonetheless, that's the one thing if I had a gripe about the doors is having to shut them so hard. So I haven't been able to really drive this much only when I came and picked it up because he was out of town when I installed all that. So one thing I did notice as well is when you have the windshield down and everything closed up, the pressure makes it harder to close the doors. It's kind of, it's hard to explain, but you can, so if one door is open, the other closes a lot easier. And then if you open the other one and close the other one, then it closes easier. But getting the last one closed, it seems a little bit tougher just because I think the pressure inside the cab it's just kind of interesting. It's just huh. what I noticed. But the doors are solid. They're like oh, yeah. They're heavy, beefy, heavy, dirty doors. So, very nice. Um, interior. One thing that I noticed on this, Dustin, why don't you talk about your seats? They they, they bolstered they them. Low, yeah, yeah low, so look, everything. I think all the models, they actually changed over for 22, where they bolstered these seats like really nicely. Again, I'll defend, uh, compare it to the Defender because I know that those seats are really bolstered. The one thing I wish this had, like the Defender, is a flip down middle seat right here in the front, like with cup holders. They just put the cup holders right here. But the seats are super bolstered, especially compared to my well, old then you'd one. Have, you'd have an armrest and cup yeah, holders. Yeah, it'd be nice. I mean, if this yeah. thing right here, I mean, how hard would it be to make it separate, to flip down, have cup holders, armrest? It would actually be really helpful. Um, but yeah, they embroidered the Trail Boss on here. Uh, the seats in my opinion and all of them like lift up there's a ton of storage as you guys know and all these seats they flip up the passenger one flips up you could put a subwoofer which I plan on doing underneath the passenger seat or like a five gallon bucket is what they make it for and then same thing with the rear uh, but everywhere there's storage underneath almost every seat it's crazy yeah. The other thing too is like if you look up, Dustin, show them the headliner. Like, oh yeah, it's fully it's it's fully finished inside. Yeah, it comes with an LED light here, not one in the back. You can sure put one in easy. But yeah, I mean it's like it's practically like a vehicle yeah. <laughs> inside where they finish this. I'll tell you, the sound system sucks. It's horrible. <laughs> it like it, even like turning up the bass just is basically all treble. Um, so that's the other thing I want to do is change out these speakers in the front. They're just they're horrible. So. Especially with how much you paid for the machine, you would think you can get a little bit decent quality, you know, sound. No, you know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, so the other cool thing. So when I bought my Ranger in 2016, I originally it came with 27 inch wheels, I think, or maybe 26 inch. I think they're 26. I think they're 26, yeah. and we went to 27. Yeah. These actually come with Pro Armor 29s. So they come with the 29 inch rim. Um, which I think is awesome. It gives you more clearance, and that's just factory with the 29-inch rim. And so hang on. So the rim is what size? It's not 29. Oh, sorry, 29-inch tire. Yeah. I think I don't know what size the rim is. And probably 14. Four, I think it's a 14. Yeah. And this is a. Uh, yeah, 14. Pro the Pro Armor tire. Yeah, so 14 uh, by 29, I guess. There you go. So. And then of course the rears are the same size, but they're a lot wider. Yeah, they're a little bit wider. Yep. So another thing I wanted to mention real quick about the inside that's really cool that they put in. I think it was with the 21s and 22s. I don't know. Don't quote me because I don't know any of that information for sure. But they put in a trickle charge feature. So right, you have two 12 volt outlets right in the front here. Uh, right in between underneath the ride command. And you have the trickle charge feature. So you can just plug your charger in and just let it trickle charge in your garage or wherever you're at automatically which i think is pretty cool they put that in there so i've got almost 100 miles on this machine right now honestly most of the miles have been street miles i have gone out a couple times with my wife just here locally and ridden um and you know it's been a blast it's done really well but a lot of it is street miles but i am about to go up to duck creek and we're going to be putting a lot more miles on it this summer so i'll have a really good opportunity to 
I guess, come back and say, here's what I think throughout the summer. But if there were two things I had to say I love about this right now and two things I don't love about it, well, obviously I love the AC. That's, I mean, it's, we went out one day and it was like 95 degrees and we had everything closed up, AC on, kept us cool. I mean, it was great. It was fantastic. So I love the AC. I love that feature. And I also love the fact that I know that I'm riding just as high stock as I was by putting the lift kit which was a two inch lift and bigger tires on my old machine. I'm riding stock on this machine as high as I was on that machine. So uh, I know I could, you know, traverse over rocks, things like that easily. Two things I don't like. Okay. So obviously the radio I mentioned that needs an upgrade, like so bad. So I'm going to be doing that. And then the other thing, quite frankly, I didn't really expect this, but when the doors are shut, windows are up, uh, it's hard to see the approach angle. So when you're coming up with something, on my last one, I just had the netted doors. I could easily see out kind of both sides and see where, you know, terrain-wise, what I was coming up against. This, it's actually a little bit different. It's like a vehicle. I mean, you come up and you don't really see the front end. You don't really know. So I'm still getting used to it. I'm sure you get used to it over time. But I am still getting used to that. So that's something for me I was surprised and don't really like because I like being able to see easier where I'm going. So... All right, guys, so that is it for the Ranger walk around. Um, the biggest thing here is just kind of just first give you the first initial impressions, the walk around of the unit. Dustin will use it a lot more through the summer, and then we'll probably do some more, um, you know, different type of, in, you know, reviews and, and different things. Oh, yeah, on for sure. As we're adding things onto it. Garrett, see, that was part of the thing. You said if I get the machine, you guys will do all the work. So far, we've got the you know Street Legal kit on, but so the goal is to is to get Dave <laughs> out of his bed and over here to actually work on the machine too. That's the goal, but uh, that will come. So I hope you enjoyed the initial walk around of the new Ranger that Dustin got. Stay tuned for more info on that on our channel later on as we go. Um, but also, if you have any questions, again, please leave them in the comments below. Make sure you also check out our Rocky Mountain affiliate link and there you can buy actually a bunch of accessories and different uh, service kits and all that kind of stuff for even the Ranger and tons of other machines. Um, if you have, a, you know, if you get a chance to check that out, please do so and we'll leave the link in the description below as well. Um, until next time, make sure whatever you pack in, you pack out. And this is Garrett and this is the ex-deranged dude, Dustin. <laughs> That's me. And we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.